Hello everyone. It's kind of hard to believe that this is the start of my ninth month of my transition medically, which is just... <sighs> First up, I have completed my sixth and final session of laser hair removal. Now, unfortunately, I do still have to shave the few remaining hairs every single day, and uh... Some people think that it's best to continue doing laser hair removal for a few more sessions, but I don't want to pay for that. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to electrolysis, which for sure works, uh, because at this point, after surviving six rounds of, with the laser, I'm not convinced that this hair is going to be receptive to laser. So I'll be starting up the electrolysis sometime later this month, uh, apparently it's a different kind of pain, and apparently it's mild enough that like some people tend to fall asleep because it's a long time. But uh, I'm kind of looking forward to at least less pain because the laser is just rough. Uh, I did not enjoy that, uh, obviously. Not that one would enjoy such a thing, but trust me, it's unpleasant. Next up, I revisited my old colleges, uh, two of them, to reissue my diploma. I got very upset because I actually received one of them in the mail, and uh, the outside of the envelope was addressed correctly to Mia Claire, it was handwritten, and then I open up the envelope and inside is my brand new diploma with my old name. I don't understand how a person could handwrite one name and look at that diploma and say, yeah, this looks right. And I knew that I was in trouble because when I went to submit the form to reissue my diploma and my correct name, they were like, wait, your last name didn't change? And I'm like, no, but my name did change. So the morning after I received my bad diploma all over again, I went back to the school and talked to the people that work in that department and they were very confused. They didn't seem to understand what was happening, they didn't understand the situation. So I showed them my old student ID from when I was back in school, and I showed them my license. I said, this was me then, this is me now. This is my old name, this is my current name. And they just like, they were not getting it. Until finally, it all just clicked for them, and they went, oh. <laughs> And I don't understand, like, I cannot be the first trans person to walk through the place. Like, there's no way that's the case, right? I ended up actually talking to the person who hand wrote my name on the envelope, and even they were at a loss to explain how they thought that was correct. But they did pull out the form that I submitted and said, yeah, this is what it says. It said, you filled it out correctly. I'm like, I know, that's why I'm here. Mad. So they're going to fix it. I didn't get charged another penny and it's gonna be all taken care of, supposedly. By far the most hilarious part of this process is when they pulled out the form and like highlighted the section that says new name and they told me, don't worry, we'll take care of it this time. And I was like, oh, thank goodness. For a second, I thought this form was useless and you were all incompetent, but now that there's a highlighter involved, we're all set. So yeah, that remains to be seen. I'm kind of not holding my breath with that one. I have a feeling I'm gonna be doing it all over again. The really unfortunate thing is that the way diploma printing works is that they only do it once every like two months or so, so I'm not going to find out about this until at least October, if not November. Which really sucks because my goal was to have everything in hand by the end of the year and it's like, I didn't do anything wrong. Ugh, you know, it's like so frustrating. But on the bright side, they gendered me correctly the entire time I was there, even after they eventually figured out that I was trans. Which I guess I should be thankful for, but... At the end of the day, I'm much more interested in their ability to perform their jobs correctly than their ability to gender me correctly. So then we come to my bank. There's a bit of a saga here. Uh, I went there to change my name and get my checks reissued and my debit card reissued with the correct name on there, and a month went by and nothing happened. So I went back and this person who I spoke to was like, oh my gosh, we have to take care of this. Don't worry, I'm gonna give you my contact information. If anything else goes wrong, we're gonna take care of it. Like, I'm gonna make sure that this all gets processed. You'll be taken care of, no problem. And everything was great. Like, on my statements, on my online account, on my card, and on my checks, everything was correct. And then, this past weekend, I got a letter inviting me to apply for a credit card addressed to my dead name. 
And I don't even understand how that's possible because like if it's changed everywhere, I should not be getting letters addressed to my dead name. And it's just, it's really upsetting because I'm like, I've done more than I should have to do in order to make this happen and you are not doing your jobs. I was very upset, I was very hurt, and I ended up writing a very lengthy email to this person that I worked with previously and basically threatened to leave because I'm sorry, at the end of the day, a bank should be able to use my legal name. I also cited various safety concerns, things like, you know, if my landlord didn't know I was trans or things like that and the letter got intercepted, uh, plus the emotional aspects of getting something addressed to the wrong name, no matter how hard I fight, you know, it's, it's a lot there. And so far, it's been four business days and I have received no reply. The only reason I know at all that they even received this message is because I sent it over the weekend and got an out of office message because it was the weekend indicating that this person would return on Monday and apparently not answer me for four days. And I said to them in this email, like, by the time I've changed my name and gender marker on all of my documents, do you really think it's that hard for me to change banks too? I've already uprooted my entire life financially, like, it's not hard to do this, I can definitely do it. And it's starting to look like that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm basically giving them one week to get their act together, or at least tell me that they're sorry, because at this point I have no indication that they even care. And if I don't have an answer from them, I'm going to just open an account at another bank where they'll only know me by one name. I just, I haven't fought this hard and this long to be dead named by my own bank. So yeah, you know, I kind of expect that there's going to be things like this in the future, I keep coming up against things like I just found out that for some reason internally my job changed my name but not my gender marker. You know, it's just little things like that that keep coming up and I keep having to deal with them one at a time that just, they get to you. I don't know, I'm just really eager to be at the end of this process and, you know, it's, it's one of those things that in the trans community they tend to scoff at you and be like, you will never be done with this and I'm like, oh god. <laughs> You know, I feel like this name is going to follow me to my grave, and I would really like for that not to be the case, but there's only so much I can do. But the big headline news out of this week is that I met with my doctor again, and am now, as of last Wednesday, doing weekly injections. Yay! Uh, you know, I was having some really serious issues with the ups and downs, and especially the downs, of uh, my hormone cycle based on doing injections every two weeks and this is going to help me a lot, I hope. In particular, I'm really hoping that it will improve my mood. Uh, I'm sure that Amanda agrees with that assessment. But there was some bad news that came along with that uh, from my metabolic levels. Uh, so currently I'm at the limit for how much potassium I can have in me at one time before I start worrying about dropping dead. And that's a thing that I need to like actually address somehow. Uh, it's definitely gone up since taking the uh, extra Spiro, which is pretty typical as I understand it. You know, it's a concern. I don't know what else to do about it. I am planning on having bottom surgery at some point, so I hopefully won't need that. Some people also reach the point where their estrogen levels are high enough to suppress their testosterone enough that they don't actually need it, and that would be great because I am really sick of peeing. But my new endocrinologist has recommended that I get a primary care doctor to get those levels checked out. And the other thing is that I don't really trust the methodology by which they're actually testing me because previously I would get my blood drawn before I ate or drank anything, including my vitamins for the day, and now they're testing me like exactly two hours after I take my vitamins and I'm like, maybe that would explain the high levels. But I ultimately decided not to fight them on that because I feel like it's probably a good idea for me to have a primary doctor as well. The real problem with that is that it's a thing in the medical community to refuse to treat trans people because I just don't know what to do with them and all this kind of stuff. So it's actually going to be a bit of a challenge to find a doctor who is accepting new patients in my network and is trans friendly. So that's kind of a challenge, but I think I'm up to it. My new doctor also recommended uh, several people that I should consider for bottom surgery and I have to look into those. So any day now, that'll happen. Yup. It's really silly because like, it's just a consultation. I don't even have to like, agree to go to them. I could just feel it out, see what they say, go from there. But it's just like, 
it's this huge hurdle because then it feels like I'm actually doing it and the whole thing is just really scary and terrifying and just kind of overwhelming. You know, I've come a long way with that, like I'm certainly more comfortable with the idea than I was three months ago, but it is a really scary thing. My gender therapist says that I have the right attitude about this. Basically, I'm not going into this surgery expecting it to fix all of my problems. It's really, I'm just trying to reduce, at minimum, my bottom dysphoria, which is just bad enough on its own. Like, of course I want the right parts, of course I do, and I want them all to work, but more than that, I want to not have the problem I currently have with that part of my body. So, basically, my gender therapist is telling me that I'm supposed to be terrified, so mission accomplished. It's really hard to not overstate the enormity of this decision because you really do only get one shot at it. Like, yes, there's surgeons who will, like, do stuff after, you know, who, but most people don't want to touch you after you've had this kind of surgery anywhere in that area. Um, you know, it feels like if I make the wrong decision, I'm going to have to live with the negative consequences for the rest of my life. And even going with a surgeon who's done it a million times, there's still that chance that I could be the first one in their line of a million success stories that doesn't go well. And at the end of the day, I'm kind of having to just accept the idea that, like, it may not work, you know? And that's sort of the hurdle that's really hard to get over, because, like, today I have a working set of parts that does not cause me pain, other than psychic pain. But it's really hard for me to, like, risk that for the prospect of, like, feeling a little bit better about myself. But then I realized, no, it, it's really causing me a fair amount of psychic pain. Like, I don't know. It's, it really doesn't feel that terribly different from when I decided that I was going to try to do HRT. Because, like, it is permanent in some ways. And, like, you are making these decisions that will impact the rest of your life. And you don't know if it's right for you. And you don't know if you're doing the right thing. And, like... The difference is that with HRT, there's points at which you can adjust it, like I've switched over to weekly injections, like there's things you can do to kind of tweak it and get exactly where you're comfortable, but with surgery, it's kind of a forever one-time shot. It just feels really enormous and huge and like looming right now, and to some extent, I'm never going to have control over it. No matter how much research I do or how good this surgeon is, like, I'm the one that has to live with whatever the outcome is for the rest of my life. And yeah, it's, it's big. It's a very big decision. But I know for certain that I'm unhappy with the situation as it exists today, and that something has to change, so I guess I have to make a decision of some kind. And sooner would be better than later. Uh, there's a very long lead time for these surgeons, especially the really good ones, because like they have a backlog of like 50 other people that want to do the same procedure. Um, but that actually kind of benefits me in some way because there is hair removal involved and like certain procedures require different things and like there's prep work that I need to do on my end. So yeah, I kind of need to just bite the bullet and schedule these consultations and meet with these doctors and see what they have to say and offer and go from there. And that's, at the end of the day, I have to work with what's available to me and yeah. I don't know, at, at some point I have to make a decision, and the first decision I have to make is to actually make the call, which is way harder than it sounds like it should be, but it feels real then, you know? It's not me theoretically talking about it with family and friends and my audience, it's me actually talking to a doctor who's going to perform this surgery potentially. So yeah, it's a lot. And of course, like, I can't get over the idea that it's not just me this is affecting, it's also affecting my partner and stuff. And it just, it just makes it bigger, you know? Like, as much as I'm the one that has to live with it forever, so is my partner. I don't know. I'd like to have functioning parts, that would be great. But I also know that right now all I'm doing is functioning and I want to be happy and comfortable with myself and unfortunately it's going to take something like this for me to feel that way and if I don't do it, no one else is going to do it for me, and it will never get done, and it will never get dealt with, so it's got to happen. And now that I'm out of distractions in the legal transition sense, like, there's really nothing stopping me at this point besides my own self, which is really hard to accept because it's like, 
okay, well now I have to actually do this and I have to actually accept that this is a thing I need to work on and work towards it actively and start making pro-cons lists for all these doctors and stuff, like, it's a lot, you know? But I also need to take stock of how far I've come. If anyone told me a year ago that I'd be this far along in my transition and I'd be full-time and living my real life and getting gendered correctly and, and all kinds of really great stuff, I, I don't think I would have believed them, you know? I'm still really happy with how my brain is working, especially we'll see how weekly goes. You know, it's worlds better than it was before and I'm a better person for it. I'm just so much happier and, you know, even though I'm scared and frustrated and upset and hurt and all of this, like, it's still better than what my life was like before that. I guess I'm just really thankful that I get to be myself and every little thing that gets in the way, every incompetent person who can't do their job and can't seem to figure out how to change your name, it's like, in the, at the end of the day, does it really matter? Like, I'm still getting to live as myself and that's kind of amazing. I'm a lot happier, that's for sure. So, um, for those of you out there who are really scared about your transition and whether or not you should go through with it, uh, only you can answer that question, but I can tell you that in my experience, it's been worth everything that I've been through, including the laser, which is saying something because that nonsense is awful. I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, that's all for this month. Uh, I'll be back again next week with another video that I hope you'll find interesting. Until then, stay curious.